Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So a quick video on how to handle Shadow DOM, which is available inside the iframe. Actually, this question asked by uh, Sanjay, who is the founder and creator of Selectors Hub. He actually asked this question on LinkedIn. And I thought of uh, sharing a video. It's a very, very good scenario. Slightly complex one, no doubt about it. So this is the application and what Sanjay is asking that uh, you have to enter something over here in this particular text field that do you love T or not. And if you see the HTML DOM, this is the input field which is available inside the shadow root and this is open and it's having its own hash shadow root means it's having its own HTML DOM over here. Okay. And the good thing is that the complex thing is that the shadow root is actually available inside one iframe also. So here you just keep scrolling up and then you will see one iframe here as well. Just see this here, iframe. So this entire section, you can see the blue highlighted section is available inside one iframe where ID is equal to packed. And this iframe is actually available inside the main HTML uh, DOM, the top HTML DOM here. So this is the HTML, this is the head and this is the body. And under this body, we have one iframe. And then under that particular iframe, this is the iframe and under this iframe we have a shadow root element is available. The shadow DOM element is available here. So how will you reach here? So you have to cross multiple things, right? So you have to go to the browser, browser to page, page to um, the specific iframe. And then inside this iframe, this uh, shadow root element, uh, you have to get into this. And then there is one input field and then you have to enter a value here. First of all, one thing that you have to understand that for shadow root, you cannot create an XPath. So you cannot write it like this input, uh, you know, some XPath by using some attribute that you are creating it. So you have to create one JS query selector. And then on the basis of that, you have to handle it and you have to execute Java. You have to use JavaScript executor for this. So first I'll show you on the console in the dev Chrome protocols that uh, how exactly you can handle it. So what you just need to do, you right click on it, go to input and then go to uh, copy. And then copy this JS path here. This is your JavaScript path. Copy this JS path and go to console. And then you simply paste it over here. And here you can see this is returning you an object input type equal to text over here. This entire element that we are getting it over here. Okay. And I'll do one thing that uh, I'll again use this particular object and store in some element. For example, le is equal to this. You're storing in this particular variable okay in my javascript i'm not writing any selenium java code right now i'll show you with java code as well and then what you do is that you can use this le dot and then you can use one set attribute method is available which attribute we know that okay there is one attribute that is called the value attribute and which value that you want to select so i want to select something do you love t and let's say i'm writing any a T name here, let's see green T here or something like this. And then you enter the value and then see the thing that will be displayed over here. It means green T will be entered inside this text field. So here you can see green T. So this is what you have to perform if you're using Selenium with Java, Selenium with Python or any other specific language that you are using it. Okay. So I'll show you practically how exactly we do it with Selenium Java. So this is the I'm launching Chrome and then putting implicitly wait or 20 seconds and then launching this application. And then what exactly I'm going to do that I have to first switch to this particular frame. So here I don't need to switch to this frame because this is already pointing to this particular frame only here. You can see in the, in this particular dropdown, it's already pointing to this frame. It means we are already in this particular uh, section, but programmatically when you run with the Java code or with any programming language with Selenium, if you're writing it, you have to switch to this frame. So I'm be using switch to a frame by using a frame ID. I can use it so I can just see the frame ID. So the frame ID is this ID is equal to packed. So let's use this ID equal to packed over here. Okay. Now the control is available in this particular driver is available inside the frame. And now we have to keep uh, going and then we have to search for a shadow root element where input field is available. Right. So whatever right click on it once again and then whatever the js path is available you just copy this particular js path here okay and then we have to execute this js path with the help of javascript executor so i'll do one thing that i'll convert my java i'll convert my driver with the javascript executor so i'll put a bracket i'll do a typecasting here with respect to javascript executor 
and uh, this is actually giving me for example jse is equal to this and uh, here okay so with this jse you can execute any javascript you know that right we can simple say jse dot execute a script that you can execute that but before that we have to create a javascript for that so how will you create that so i'll do one thing to execute the javascript uh, first i have to create a web element so i'll do one thing directly i'll write jse dot execute script and what is your script name see this what you just need to write you write a return a keyword over here because this will be my return a keyword with respect to javascript so i have to get the javascript web element from the browser and whatever the js path is there let me just copy once again copy js path from here and then you paste it here okay so here you can see this is my javascript a js path that i have added you don't need to pass the second argument just remove it and put a semicolon here and then this js dot execute a script it will return document dot query selector and this query <coughs> selector will be executed so this is what we were getting and we were storing inside the element right so we are writing hey return this element so it will return what it will return an object what kind of object it will return a web element over here so let's see i'm just storing inside the element which is equal to this and then import your web element from selenium library okay so js dot execute a script it will return an object and then object to web element again we can top typecast here so i'll say okay fine this is my selenium web element now so this entire thing will become a selenium web element the rhs after equal to and then storing inside the web element reference variable here fine then i have to write what the next line is set attribute value something so this is again a javascript so how will you write it so what you do is simple create a javascript over here so for example my javascript will be a string and then this is my javascript i'll write this is my arguments uh, zero dot and then you write set attribute method this is make sure that no spelling mistakes set attribute which attribute the value attribute and what exactly the value that you want to enter so i'll enter for example green masala a t here something like this that i'm going to enter okay so this will become my javascript and then i just need to do what i just need to execute my script so i'll do one thing that uh, i can use this particular jse once again dot execute a script what is a script the script name is a js and what is the element so for example let's see this is my element here and you pass supply this element here okay so js dot js comma element so again i'm going to use jse dot execute a script and uh, this is the value should be entered let's run it let's see it is working or not so right click on it run as java application and uh, here you can see the browser is getting launched and uh, this is let's see it is still running it takes some time because it will go to that html html to iframe iframe to, to reach at that particular shadow root element and then it will enter in the text field so let's see see the program is still running in the background you can see it's not giving you any error and then you see green masala tea got entered here slightly slow but this is the only way that we can handle this scenario like that so green masala tea got entered here perfect so this is a solution for this same thing you can do it with python javascript ruby or any other programming language that you are using with selenium you can do that now i'm giving you one assignment i'm giving you one task here exactly same value you have to enter in your coffee time and the lunch time also something like that just try to do that maintain multiple web elements let's see this is my t element coffee element and the time element or something and then keep adding the values over here like that and you can create a generic function also where you can remove the hard code value or whatever the value that you want to enter you can simple and over there like this so this is a way we have to handle what what exactly we have done we have done from html dom there is one iframe and then inside this particular iframe there is a shadow root element or shadow dom element is available so i'll say shadow dom element so we have to reach over here and we have to cross this iframe also so this line is compulsory so if you don't write this line so you just comment it out and then when you try to run it because the this shadow root element is not available directly on the page directly on the page html dom 
So we have to go through with that. So in this case, it should not work. So let's run it and let's see. Okay, see here uh, I have given the, I have commented out that and then it's saying that cannot read properties of null reading shadow root. I'm not able to read this shadow root because it's not available directly on this particular uh, page when you launch this application. So to launch, when you launch this application, this is your first HTML body a uh, DOM will be loaded. And then after that you, this guy will, the driver will be on the iframe. So this will give you the control on iframe. And then on the iframe, this particular shadow root element is available. And then you set the attribute. And remember one thing that you cannot use XPath for shadow root element. Okay. So this is the important thing that you have to understand that. So that's all for this particular video. I hope you liked it. And thank you Sanjay for uh, putting this question on uh, LinkedIn. And I really like this question. And I hope pretty much that uh, people will learn from this particular video. Thank you so much and please share this video with others as well. Subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions with respect to SVG element, shadow root or any kind of complex UI that you are not able to uh, automate, feel free to put in the comment section. Definitely I'll try my best to cover that. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Till then take care and God bless you all.